it's Saturday. It's almost noon. And that means that it is time to jump into the studio. Bear with me. I'm just doing a couple of quick things as I prep to pop my phone down. Now, generally, I have not broken any of the Twitch rules as far as music goes. However, I can say that it is challenging. I love to listen to music while I'm painting. So I'm going to pop in an earbud and I'm going to be playing some music, hoping that it doesn't come across. But you can see on the table behind me, I know we're a little bit early, um, you can see on the table in the screen behind me that we've got a couple of figures already on the table. So we'll talk about each of these real quick. And I thought I actually had one more, that is MIA, because I thought with the troll, I was working on something else, but I'm not seeing it. Sometimes when you get to be my age, things just fall off the radar maybe. I don't know. Anyhow, we've got enough here to get us going. So that's a good start. Um, and you can see I do have, I had the troll on a handle, but because I've got white tack, it is not sticking very well. I'm gonna to try to knead it up a little bit and get that troll to stick a little bit better so I can keep him on the handle. Um, and give me just a minute and then I'll show it off a little bit. Now the big figure there, um, all three of these figures are out of Reaper's Bones 5 Kickstarter. So if you are wondering where the figures are from, it is Reaper Bones 5 Kickstarter where I acquired these. Uh, Reaper has announced that they are preparing at the end of this month, March 31st, to do the Bones 6 Kickstarter. So if you're into miniatures, miniature painting, miniature collecting, um, a tabletop use of miniatures and you're looking for a great value, um, I highly recommend going to reaperminiatures.com. I've got a lot of information on their website. They are not a sponsor of mine. So don't think that I'm just pushing them um, out of like paid programming or anything like that. Uh, I am a actual purchaser of Reaper Miniatures just because I love the company, the community, and the product that they put out. So real quick before I start dipping the uh, brushes into paint, dirtying up my water, let's go over the miniatures that I've got on the table. So this is a troll. Now I've painted a few trolls. Um, and that I also received in the Kickstarter, but this one, for some reason, I did not get with the others, so I didn't paint it at the same time. And I'm just doing kind of a speed paint on this guy because I want to use it on the table. Um, but I thought it was really cool for a couple of reasons. The sword, if you can see, is kind of gnarly and bent up and everything. I've just got a, a gray liner base paint on it right now. I've got to retouch it up, but I was just using up some paint. But kind of a gnarly, rusty kind of sword is how I'm envisioning painting it. Uh, patchwork hide um, skirt. What looks like a bit of fencing on rope over to give it some protection on the chest. Rope belt with a leather pouch. It's got a big turtle, turtle shell, tortoise shell um, shield. But the thing I love the most is this iron pot for a helmet. I just think it's cool. So very quirky, very different. So I am currently working on uh, the detail pieces, all the skin tone and everything I've got done. Um, I want to see just how far I can get on some of these other bits and pieces today. 
this one here was a figure that I also just did a base coat of gray liner on. That's why it looks black. Uh, but this is a figure that um, I actually built a character for one of my other shows on Wednesday night. And this was built a while ago. This is a um, half elf ranger is the character that I built. Um, or no, I'm sorry, this was an elven ranger, a full elven ranger. Um, but a uh, pretty cool character. Uh, before I get really into painting that too deep, I'm going to grab the character sheet um, out of my uh, player's handbook, but I'll work on the skin tones and everything first. Um, so if you're interested in seeing how I do skin tones and paint things like eyes, we'll be doing that today on this figure. And then the big figure is this brain looking thing in this well. Ooh. And you can see some water splashing, these tentacles coming up, and um, super rough paint job on the well. I didn't do, I was just using up some paint, so I did just a real quick one on this, but I'm gonna go back through and retouch all of that. But I wanna focus on the brain and tentacles today. It's got this little, almost like a little bit of um, armory stuff in the back part of the brain. So um, I want to paint some brains, tentacles, water, and well. So that's kind of my big focus for today. To be able to do that, I went through and looked up just a picture of brains. So that is what I'm using for my, um, my color palette, if you will. And to do that, I'm just going to pick out a couple of colors that I think are going to do it justice. And I'm going to start with some flesh tones. I'm going to use rosy shadow and rosy skin. And then I am also going to use, I want to just do a quick little eyeball in here. Okay, there we go. I am going to use a little bit of Hmm. There we go. I'm going to use a little bit of pale violet red, carnage red, and fresh blood. So those will be the colors that I'm going to be using on the brain. And then for the tentacles, I don't know how far I'm going to get. Um, but I want to get quite a ways, so. I've got to pick out my colors real quick. Here's my ghost white, some pure white. Sometimes I need to get a new organizer for my paints, uh, just so I can have a little bit better separation on them. Bear with me as I go through and look for the right colors that I want. seeing the particular color that I want so we may come back to it we may come back to it but so far I've grabbed ashen blue snow shadow and midnight blue so a good variation of blues and yeah my white 
white is the only one I'm really needing to uh, to find up. But that's okay. Maybe we'll go with leather white. I don't know. Well, we'll not worry about that right this second. We'll come back to it if I need to. Uh, all right, so I'm going to start with some of the brain. Um, of course, the chats are open. I don't know how long I'm going to be painting uh, today. I'm hoping to get a decent chunk of this done and then some of the details on the troll done. And uh, we'll just see where everything goes. So starting out... I've got my wet palette all set and ready to go. Now because this is a large miniature, it's going to use a little bit more color than what I initially would use for a miniature. So I've done six drops of my rosy shadow. That's going to be my base coat. Add a little bit of water. I'm using a massive brush on this because as my base coat, I'm going to be painting a lot of this. And this is a super textured mini. So I want to make sure that I get into all the little crooks and crevices. And just go through and paint this up. So our weather here in Texas is starting to uh, definitely hit its spring stride. Earlier today I was out for a ride. And boy, at one point I was uh, at a stoplight and that sun on my leg. Oh my gosh. It felt like it was cooking. So welcome after the colder temperatures we've had here. I like the warmth more than I do cold. I think uh, I would always rather be warm than cold. Part of the reason why I moved to Texas was the weather. Growing up, I grew up in Wyoming which you can get into a lot of warmth there, but you also get a lot of cold. And you're gonna see some of my technique is I'll put some paint down and then move to a different area. That way that paint that I lay down gets a good chance to dry. The texture on this one here is pretty intense. It's got a lot of deep texture. Some very deep texture in some of these areas. making sure that I get into all the little crooks and crevices as best I can. Now this one here, initially I was going to do as part of a display, but I changed my mind and I'm just going to use it for my own tabletop use as an elder brain. Um, now I don't have A lot of games that focus around mind flayers. So I don't know how often it'll get tabletop use, but that is what I want to use this for. So that being said, I want to do a really good paint job, but I don't want to spend an overt amount of time at making this competition level painting. 
which is why you can see I've already painted a little bit on it in a couple of different ways um, as I was trying to think about what I wanted to do with it. So initially I painted it all black. When it was in its components, I just airbrushed it. And then uh, painted the brain, which you can see I painted that gray because I wanted it to be a little lighter than the tentacles. So I was using the black and the gray as base coats, if you will. And I am hoping that comes through on the paint job, though I did change my mind on how I wanted to paint the tentacles. First, I was going to do them kind of dark greens with a light under belly or under bottom lower part, which is why they are also painted gray. But I have, I've thought a lot about it and um, I've got a vision in my head of what I want to do and it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but it's actually based on a mind flare that I painted some time ago. And um, as I was thinking about how I'm going to use this on the table, when I get a chance to uh, use this in a game, that mind flare is one that is for my tabletop. So I wanted to tie it back into that. So that's kind of where the inspiration for the colors on the tentacle came from. Now initially, I wanted to do the well just with a dry brushing technique, but you can see it came out really rough. I'm not happy with the well. Again, I was just using up some excess paint. I was doing some, uh, some rock texture on a diorama, and I had a lot of black and gray left over. So I figured, well, I'll use up the gray and dry brush the well. But I just, I'm not happy with it. One of the things I like about painting is if you're not happy with it, you can paint over it. So long as you don't do too much paint that you're blocking out the details that the wonderful sculptors put into it, you can do as much repainting as you want. If you feel you're getting too thick, you just strip it down. And start anew. I used to start anew all the time so when I first started getting into getting back into miniature painting I'm actually going to clean that brush out and get some of that paint out. So I painted a lot of miniatures in uh, when I was a kid. Not a lot, a few. Uh, but my brother actually painted a lot more than me but there were times that he would order miniatures and um, I would order one, maybe two. And we used testers paint and um, testers brushes and they were horrible, absolutely horrible, but we loved them. And that's what we used when we were gaming and had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and my brother is definitely my inspiration on this, on painting as a whole. <coughs> Excuse me. But... I got back into miniature painting right around uh, oh, 2000, 2001, and that's when I found uh, Reaper and got more and more into uh, more dynamic painting, competition painting, painting for exchanges, um, and painting miniatures for my tabletop games. And Money was tight, of course, uh, Dad um, married with four kids. Uh, when we did get the money to spend on miniatures, um, I would buy one or two at a time and paint them. And then after a few weeks, I would actually strip them completely, 100% of paint, 
reprimer them, and repaint them. I can't tell you how many times I stripped down miniatures and repainted them. Dozens, dozens and dozens. Um, then of course as I would get new miniatures and everything, I would have new miniatures to paint, but it was still kind of the same process where I was repainting miniatures a lot for a long time. And in some ways it was good because I was able to um, try different techniques on the same miniatures so I could consistently improve and see myself improving over and over again. But in some ways it was a challenge because I never kept any of them to compare, you know, my first miniature to a current miniature. So pros and cons for sure, but um, it was definitely interesting. get a uh, little drink there and let's get back to it. So they're not going to paint themselves. We're into that little, I don't know what that is supposed to be. Like I said, it's some kind of an armored back end piece. You can see I'm not being super, super precise. This here is all just about getting some paint on the miniature. I want a good base tone that we're going to build color up on. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot of paint. Move to an area where I can use all of it. So for me, miniature painting has been a learning process from the get-go. How can I constantly get better, do better, and keep painting? Because like anything else, if you want to uh, get into the hobby, the best piece of advice any painter can say is practice, 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 practice. Just like anything else, it doesn't matter what it is. Riding a bike, riding a skateboard, cooking, it doesn't matter. Practice is the key. Up here comes a little queen coming through my ears. We will rock you. I do love having some music playing while I paint. It's so relaxing. Sometimes it can be very therapeutic. For me, I'm a Gen Xer, so music has always had an important part in my life. Always, always been an important aspect of my life. So sometimes, this is the cons of pre-assembly. Sometimes that pre-assembly can be nice because you can get it onto the table fast. You can really see what you should and should not spend time painting. Um, Again, if you're not doing competition pieces. But sometimes it can be a burden because getting into some of those locations is definitely a challenge. Again, this is just for my own tabletop use, so I'm not super worried. As long as I get a good, clean paint job, it's easily determinable what it is. I'm going to be happy. And I will check for comments on and off. So if you, uh, if you are catching the show live, don't hesitate to uh, give a comment. Let me know where you're from, what you're up to, how you're doing this fine Saturday afternoon.
if there are certain miniatures that you uh, are struggling with or really enamored with. There we go. So now we just make sure everything gets nice and dry and then uh, just go through and look for areas that did not get a good even coat. And I just go through, look for areas that are dry because I've moved the miniature around a lot. I get patches that will dry faster, of course, because I painted them earlier. And I can go through and just make sure that I get a second layer on them. And this one I'm going to kind of break up by these veiny bits. And this layer I'll be a little more precise going through and looking to make sure that my coverage is good and even. I've got no brush strokes. It's got a little bit of wet in there. I want to avoid any area that's wet because you can in inadvertently pull paint off of the miniature. Give yourself a thin spot or a bald spot in that paint. Now this is a super fleshy color. Of course, because we're using that rosy shadow skin tone. But when we start layering up the other colors, you'll see it get more, more like the brain image that we're doing. As we start applying those other tones. is something that I, I can tell you I don't paint a ton of. So I really wanted to there are times as an artist as a painter, as a gamer I can't help but wonder if someone sees my search history you know, what would they think? I'm looking up the color of brains And then while I was doing this, I was also looking up in preparation of another miniature that I'm getting ready to paint. I was looking up arrow wounds. I can only imagine the poor analysts who have to go through search engine history and what they would think of my search history. Luckily it's nothing that has gotten me questioned by the FBI or anything yet so that's good. Here's a fun story though at one point we had, um, we were visiting some family, and when we came home, turned on to the street, and there were lights and sirens going like crazy. We're like, what the heck? It was right, we were living on a corner, um, in a corner house. And there were lights and sirens all around the corner right at our place 
there was FBI, there was ATF, there was sheriff. Uh, but there was, we only had, it was a small town, we only had one town cop, but town cop was there. So the FBI flags us down. Of course, in the vehicle is my wife, myself, and our four kids who were babies at the time. Well, not all of them were babies, but our youngest were babies. And they ask what we're doing on the street. And we're like, well, we live here. What's going on? And uh, they say, we have to go down to the end of the street and they will have someone meet us there. So we go down to the end of the street and this ATF and FBI agent both come and uh, they're talking to us, they're questioning us. We're like, what's going on? What's going on? We got kids, we got to get to bed. So they tell us uh, that they can either put us in a hotel for an evening or we can wait until they are complete but our neighbor, who was in like the uh, mother-in-law house on the same property, was just arrested because he was building pipe bombs in the basement and trying to sell them. Sold them, tried to sell them to an undercover ATF agent. absolutely fab flabbergasted here we've got kids and this person living on the same property is building pipe bombs in the basement absolute insanity Absolute insanity. Now while that's drying, and I'm going to keep my big brush because for these tentacles, I'm going to do the same process, same exact process. six drops of my Midnight Blue. And I'm just going to start putting a first base layer on the tentacles. And this is not going to show up like super well on the first coat because I'm going over black. And black is going to show through. I am using a wet palette. So the colors are not going to be super vibrant to start. Because they'll naturally thin a bit from the wet palette. And I just want to start getting some tone put on here. So that I've got a good base layer to build up some color on. So my process, thought process on this, is that I want to tie this into a miniature that I've already painted of a mind flare. So the tones are going to be a little more blued and kind of red and pink on the underside um, with some whites. But for this upper bit I want these to be very blued. And I'm going to 
going to do some almost like a splotching color on it for some added character. Here we've got some uh, different pollens coming up, of course, with the weather changing. So if I sound a little nasally, that's why. I should not have assembled this until I had the majority of the painting done, just to make it easier. That's okay, we learn as we go. I was uh, initially not planning to do very much with this miniature as far as the paint goes. And I'm not going to be able to use this large brush on all of this. But I do want to use it as much as possible just so I get faster coverage for this initial base coat. Start competing in with the space versus the brain. which is why here shortly I'll have to change to my smaller brush, probably a size 2 I'll go with. We'll see as we get there. Weighing these base coats is just going to help me get a good idea for tones, colors, paint placement, highlighting. So super important to uh, for myself. Not everybody paints the same way. But super important for myself. This step kind of sets the precedence for me. grab a um, blue-green and do the same thing on the liquid. Little Billy Joel coming on. to go through for that water yeah just again this helps me get my focus in on different aspects of the model So I'm going to do the water. I'm also going to do that bit on the back. I suppose I better do a... Uh, no, let's do... Where's my russet? There we go. <coughs> 
So this will help my eyes kind of better get an idea, get a feel for the directions I want to take this miniature. So for this one, I'm going to grab a little bit older brush. It's uh, not quite as sharp as some of my others. But it's a uh, number two and it's sharp enough to get done what I want to get done. So I'm wanting to add the siren song to the water. Sharp enough for me to get in nice and close to the brain and the tentacles without going too crazy. And I'm not worried about perfection just because I'm going to be doing lots of highlighting and touch-ups throughout. But I don't want to purposefully be messy on the applications of this either. So trying to be somewhat precise with my application. And again, this is just going to help me visualize and see where all the different elements of this miniature are. And hopefully for anybody viewing as well. Get to see what's water, what's brain, what's tentacle, what's stone. Sometimes just blocking in those colors definitely gives you an advantage when you're painting. Oh, a little Iron Maiden coming on now. Obviously my, uh, I hope you can see I hit that tentacle a little bit. You can see it. areas I'm hitting the brain, I'm hitting the tentacles. It's okay. Those will be minor touch-ups that we've got to do. I just don't want to do massive ones. Should not have assembled this. I am really kicking myself for assembling this. You know, I was just thinking a quick paint job, just a speed paint, give it enough detail with some uh, base colors and then dry brushing that it'll be just fine. That's okay, we'll make it work. get this blue put down then I'm going to take just a moment and wring out my hands get a little drink maybe we'll do the flesh tones on the elf 
while we recoup a little bit from this because I'm beating myself up pretty hard for doing the assembly and there are times when you just gotta let things go could be worse Two more panes, planes, panes, panels, two more wet areas to do. Now this aspect I think is super important when you're laying these base layers down. Notice we have not done any of the highlighting on the brain or the tentacle colors. When you've got pre-assembled like this, I feel that uh, it's super important to lay down these base coats as many as possible just so that you can keep your wet palette colors nice and clean and it's super easy to go back through and do your touch-ups. Now your highlights will be more focused so you should not have as much that you'll have to go back through and touch up and clean up and all of that. And again, this is all just my personal. If you've got a different technique that works better for you, more power to you. This really works well, this process. Whew. to uh, do a little manipulating to get in there. The good thing about this being cast in plastic is it does have some give so I can move some things out of the way when I need to. I used to be uh, adamant absolutely adamant that I would only paint metal. But as time has gone on, the manufacturing has improved so much that the plastics they're using now are really, really good. I mean, they hold the cast details really, really well, which used to be my biggest problem is the plastics would not hold detail very well. So you'd see this beautiful sculpted mini and you'd order it in the plastic version and it just did not look the same because it didn't hold the details. Just a little bit more in there that I would love to be able to get to. One little 
area there to connect them. There we go. Whew, doggies. Yeah, real quick, I'm going to rinse that out. We're going to do that russet brown on the, uh, on the back area. And again, this is all just my base tones. So I can go through and touch up the areas that I had some bigger challenges with. You should have started on this area so that that blue would be dry by now. That's okay. Now this area here I'm going to do in reds. And for me, my shadow colors that I use for reds are browns. So that's why we're going with this russet. So red brown. As I build deep, darker reds, it'll look a little more. Um, <coughs> almost uh, keratinish. And there we go. There are the elements of this miniature. Clean this brush out again. I'm going to go back through. I've used up all my rose shadow, rosy shadow. So I'm going to put a little bit more in and I'm just going to touch up a couple of areas that we've hit that just need touched up. And I'm going to use the same smaller brush. Just some small areas like here. We got some of that siren song on. I just want to look and see. This is our opportunity to do some cleanup, some minor touch-up. Looking for areas where blue may have gotten on there. There's a little, little bit right in there. And also just looking for any thin areas. See a little bit there. Just a hair there. Right. Now we've got our blue. Same thing. We want to go through and look for areas that we got other colors on. So there's a little bit of the siren on a tentacle there. But then also I want to go through and look for thin areas. And there are areas, oh, there's a little bit of the brown there, that need a little bit more. And so the bases for sure, I'm being very careful around those bases. So the coverage is not great. And with this smaller brush, I can get in there a little bit better not worry about affecting the brain. Get a good layer on there. So 
So really looking at the base of the tentacles. Able to be a lot more careful with where we're laying that paint. a little challenging. Just looking again for good opacity. I want these to be nice and solid color. With this finer brush, I'm really just looking at the base areas. There's our base coat. Wowzer, what a job. Jeez. Now I'm going to use a little bit of the rosy. And I'm going to change up to a size one brush. Let's see what time is it here. Ah. James, thank you. Oh, so the wet look, yes. Um, if you're going for a wet look, it's all about in the finishing touches. So what you want to do is make sure that you have it sealed with a gloss. So I'll use two sealants on this, a gloss sealer and a brush on sealer. So the brush on sealer is matte. And then the gloss sealer, of course, is gloss. So the brush on sealer is going to go on the fountain aspect, just on the stonework. And then the gloss is going to go everywhere else. That way you have a high sheen on the water, on the brain, on the tentacles. Because all of those should be extremely wet and drippy. Um, there are a few different materials that you can use, um, but when you've got one like this where you want both matte and gloss, you really need to have two different sealers so you can keep the kind of dry elements dry and the wet elements wet. Um, now you could go through and make, uh, you know, make everything look wet. Of course, because you've got spill and everything, you would think there would be uh, some, some wet aspects. Uh, you can do that as well. You can also do that with like resin uh, if you want to have like drips or dribbles or anything running out. So a lot of different tricks you can do to keep it wet. Yeah, not a problem. Now that we've got our higher tone and our size one, This is where we're going to really start adding in some texture. So I'm going to pick highlight areas that are just 
sculpt it in and I'm going to start laying down a lighter tone. And this is going to really make these brains look more dimensional. And one of the things to think about is, do you want these bigger clumps uh, that are more vein-like to actually be veins? Because initially I thought about that, painting veins, um, and kind of the blues and reds of veins. But I decided instead I was just going to keep it all more like brain matter. So just thinking about where I want my highlights to come in from above. I'm going to just pop in some highlights on all of the textured surfaces. This is going to make our shadows, our rosy shadow that we painted as a base layer sink in deeper. And this will give us the visual aspect that we need so our eyes can better see all this texture. Because when you just have it one tone, while you can see some of the texture, your eye just cannot delineate how much depth is actually in here. So it's all due to highlights and shadows. Augmenting them is going to really give us a better depth perceptive or perception on miniature scale. So as good as these sculptors are, until the miniature painter goes through and paints, tonally paints, to highlight the sculpture, the eye has a harder time perceiving the smaller scale, which is why so many miniature sculptors are really good friends with really good painters, because a really good painter can make their sculpture absolutely stand out that much better again whether that's on the tabletop or in competitions in shows once we get this kind of quadrant of this brain done you'll be able to really really see the variation. The tones we want to highlight play well together, so they are just totally lighter and darker. And then to augment it, that's when we'll start using the delineated colors of the red, violet, and the reds. So that's where we'll really deepen the shadows and make it look a little more it's going to look a lot more, I guess, bloody is the best way to put it. The little bits here, you really have to pay attention to what is going to be highlighted and not. You don't want to highlight everything course because you want to have some of this disappear and 
when we put on those other colors. So for me, I always do about uh, three quarters of it. But when you look at that, well, that's a little too far away. Adjust my light here a little bit. Uh, that sun isn't playing well either. But you can start to see a little bit more sculpture actually pop out on this quadrant here compared to the others. So super important to keep your highlights consistent because as you're doing this from quadrant to quadrant, you want to make sure that the eyes are seeing them with similar perspective of tone and shadow, highlight and shadow. So I always try to paint from the same angle. Make sure your base tone shines through on the deeper recesses. You don't want to cover it all up, especially because we will be doing the wash with the other tones. And we'll be popping in some deeper shadows on some of the lower areas. Some of these little bits here are pretty thin. And then some of them are much, much thicker. This is where it really gets tricky when you start going down the sides. Remembering your highlights go from the top. So you want to get that just that upper edge and not the side that's facing you, depending on how you're holding it too. For me, I turn it to face me. Elder Brains, I can tell you in game, I've only used one time. In a game so now I've got to come up with a game where I can use this elder brain because when we did I didn't have a miniature of it the miniature I used was actually just a small ramekin and uh, that was it so I do enjoy as a GM having miniatures that I can use on the table just to help my players with immersion course it's great for them to use for you know tactical planning and everything as well but just for me as a GM I love having miniatures on the table second guessing myself if I should have uh, painted those as veins or not but I, I really don't think I do in the images that I referenced just did not have massive thick heavy veins popping out so I'm going to stick with my guns and paint them just as 
fleshy bits. And we'll see how it comes out. I am actually pretty glad that I decided to spend a little bit more time on this miniature than what I had initially kind of planned. Just because I think when this does get onto a table, it's going to look really cool. Much better than just a speed paint job. Now the next layer that we'll do, we'll put in some real deep shadows on that violet. Uh, and that'll really help delineate it as well. Really make it stand out. that uh, bit of worry that when I pop this onto the table the uh, players some of my current players will be more interested in trying to cut a deal with an elder brain. So as I'm painting it, I'm also starting to think, well, what else do I need to have in the layer? Because I can see them trying to meld with, capture, make a deal with, get a tadpole out of there. Some of the uh, player characters would uh, be more intrigued on how they can utilize and I hate to say subjugate but yeah maybe subjugate an elder brain to their own wills so we've got to think up a good story where the Elder Brain is definitely a threat that needs to be addressed and dealt with from a hero's perspective and not a murder hobo. How can I use it for my own gain? I remember the first time that I encountered as a player that I encountered an Elder Brain. It was a long campaign that we were doing and Took us forever to get through the Underdark, to confront the Elder Brain. When we finally got there, it was like about time. It was a super tough battle. And uh, we came close to not succeeding in destroying the Elder Brain. It was so satisfying when we finally did. What a great game. Um, that was just a homebrew that my GM ran us through but years and years and years and years ago. So
getting close now on this. So the good thing about the highlighting is because it's much smaller aspects that you have to do, it actually goes pretty quick. So when I'm doing a process like this where I'm doing a base layer and then just highlighting up, it can go by pretty fast. So even though this isn't like what a lot of people would really call a speed paint, I feel it goes by in a real good speedy manner. And we've just about got this whole bad boy licked now for the uh, base and highlight. keep uh, that brush clean. The temperatures are high enough here and um, it's the humidity is actually down a bit so my paint is drying on the brush pretty quick. One of the pros of using your wet palette and we are ready for the next tone. I'm trying to break these up a little bit too. So painting almost like uh, lines a little bit as we add in some of the washes, those will really show up well. It'll be a little bit more organic. There we go. Green highlighting done. And the colors on these are not quite as good as I would like them to be on screen. That camera doesn't capture it quite as well. The color on it is a little bit off. But you can definitely see the sculpting. Um, now before we move on to the next bit, I'm actually going to use a little bit of deep red And same brush, just a size one. I'm going to go in and start putting in a little bit of red on these plates. Again, I want this to almost look like insect-like when I'm done. So starting with that russet and then the deep red, we're going to actually finish it with an orange red. So it'll really stand out from the brain itself. And it's going to look a lot more um, insect-like on this back end. So I'm hoping for real variation on the different aspects or elements of this miniature. I want the gooey fleshy brain 
the flowy, um, I don't know the right word, but uh, the tentacles, I want them to seem very loose and wet and, uh, you know, non-structured. And then rough and plate-like on that back brain bit. All right, let me check the time here real quick. Ooh, we've already gone an hour and 15 minutes. So I've got to stand up and do a quick stretch break. Um, I'm going to mute real quick and uh, get a drink and do my stretch. But I'll be right back if you happen to join us in the brain. Maybe we'll do uh, the flesh tones next on the elf. So I'll be right back. All right, good stretch in. So I always tell people if they're sitting down for long times, whether it's work, or painting, or drawing, whatever, there's an exercise that I do where I rotate out my legs um, because it all goes into the hips. I know it feels like your lower back sometimes, but the hips, it's all about the hips. I swear by it. Um, all right, so real quick, I'm going to change paces here. We are going to do... A little bit of flesh. And we're going to touch up on this bad boy here. I know I haven't even touched that troll, um, which I really like the troll, but. Um, I'm all about getting this elder brain kind of done. It's been on my to-do bench for a long time. So getting this much done has been really, really nice. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to do fair skin tones. And a lot of people paint flesh tones very different than I do. So, again, find your own style, what works best for you. Um, this figure here, um, we're going to do the uh, face as well as the hands. And so to start, oh, I got a lot on my brush there. Take some of that off. 
again just not very neat this is just fair shadow flesh tone and I just overpaint and I'd like to go through and get the uh, eyes done on this one here just so people can see how I do the eyes on such a small miniature and then we'll do the hands as well this is one where you've got to decide are they going to wear gloves or not um, I actually like when they are not because it gives me more opportunity to paint flesh And again, not very neat, not very pretty. For me, it's about coverage. And then depending on the tones of flesh that you're painting. The color choice, of course, is going to be varied. This is just called um, fair skin. And the fair highlight is what the two colors that I've got on my palette. But we'll go through and actually add in a little bit more here in just a moment. Once this dries, we'll do a shadow tone. We will touch up this base layer, and this will be our mid-tone, and then we'll put eyes and to get the facial features all done. And because this is an elf, there are also ears poking out. So many times, I can't tell you how many times I have um, painted all the flesh tones, gotten the hands, gotten the face, and missed the ears. So annoying. So always, I always tell people, make sure you're going through and looking at your miniature before you start painting, just so you can get a good lay of the land. fingers I missed a little bit on the pointer finger there get in between those fingers make sure we get color in there We'll give that a moment to dry and while that's drying I have what is uh, called tan skin this is from a different uh, triad there's tanned tan shadow tanned highlight so it's all designed for uh, you know quick and easy application but for me I like to mix a little bit more I guess so I water this down till a little where I get it nice and thin. I don't want it to be like a wash, but I want it to be super, super thin. And then I'm going to go in where it's dry and just pop in shadow tone in the recessed areas. Wherever you feel those shadowed areas are going to be. I'm going to do a little bit in the ears. At the very base of the ears in the back.
anywhere that the white is not going to be hitting very strong. For me, fingers are super important because you can really get that finger separation showing really, really well. A little bit in the palm there. Again, this is super, super subtle. But as we build up on the color, it'll be more and more apparent. I'm going to put just a little bit on the forehead, kind of center of the forehead, under that hair. And again, the camera is not going to give it justice. If you were to see this in person, it's a lot blockier. So when we do, yeah, that camera just is not going to do it justice. But when we do the highlights, of course, they'll be thinned down a little bit. They'll blend in a lot better on the cheekbones and everything. Because right now it's kind of blocky in color. And again, for the naked eye, tabletop level, you can't even see it. You can't even notice it. But... It's one of those things of being an artist that you just you notice and you see. So I'm going to stop that for a moment, walk away, let it dry, get a drink. And I'm going to go back to the Elder Brain, who actually I'm going to do a little bit of the orange. I want to finish that part out so I can be done. This is just called Pumpkin Orange. And I'm going to mix it with that red. So I get a real deep, deep orange. There's the orange. And I am just going to do kind of light bits of edging. And this is going to make it look almost like a wear pattern. So I'm not even doing as much as I did on the red. And then when we put on that straight pumpkin orange, it's really going to stand out and pop out. And this will make it look almost, like I said, insect-like with this bit of brown, reddish-brown, orange color. It'll look very bug-like. Red connects the brown, the orange connects the red, and you get cool, cool pattern that flows together really well. And 
again, just little bits, little subtle, almost like uh, dots of this color. Just very subtle little bits. Give it that worn look. Smaller and smaller areas as the plates go down because they don't get exposed as much. And then if you really wanted to pop this up, you could do a uh, deep yellow. And that would really punch it up brighter if you're going for like a competition look, where you want to build in lots and lots of contrast. And I know the lights don't play well with it. There's a pretty decent angle but very shell-like. Now, this one here is going to be a little tougher. I've got to actually get a dry palette and I'm moving into the pale violet red. Nope, you know what, I'm gonna wait on that. We'll do it just out of here. Um, this one here is where we're going to start adding some shadow before we do washes of red on the brain. So I'm going to add just a slight amount of water to this. Now this is going to look funky until we do the wash, but bear with me and you'll see what we're going for. So I'm going to pick the deepest areas. And I'm going to lay in a little bit of color, just selectively. Where are the deepest bits, overlays, anything that you want to drive super deep? Again, this is going to stand out really, really strong against the flesh tones. That's okay. That's what we want. This is going to drive our separation very strong. Oh, I got a little bit too much there, which means I need to take it up. There we go. Make sure you're not overdoing the highlights that you laid down. So you're going to be fast to work up any mistakes. And I'm putting a lot more down low. I know the camera is not going to pick it up very well. Once this is up on Instagram, you'll really be able to see it because the images will be from the side. So it'll stand out a little bit, a little bit better. But as we go to do the wash, it will take this from a more like pink color to a deeper red. And still keep good organic fleshiness and not just look like blood.
So this is just building in more shadow beyond what we had with our base tone. Gosh, I should not have assembled this. I'm kicking myself so hard. That's okay. We're going to adapt and overcome just a little bit more work. Let's see if I can get that picked up some. No, nope, not fast enough. Sometimes when you make mistakes like that, you can just use water and pull a lot of it up. The faster you are, the better. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that blue on there. All right, back to it. too heavy on the brush there. Pull some of that excess up. And then getting ready for our wash after we get these deeper shadow bits popped in here. Drive in some separation, which our wash is really going to help with that as well. Once we get that wash laid in here, it's really going to make it, I mean, just absolutely look brainiac. Some of those are so challenging to get to. Again, this is just kind of undersides of some of these. Your deepest holes, if you will. Just giving us some total variation in our shadowed, shady areas. In the deepest recesses, this will help the red wash that we put on and just stay a little more organic. sides up high. Very, very subtle bits. You don't need a lot. Ooh, just like that. So starting to get some separation, now we are going to go through and do two different reds. And we're going to do these as washes. And the reason I do two is because of the 
um, height of them. So the first one is going to be Carnage Red. This is going to be our shadow wet blood color. Oop. Looks like it may have a little bit of blockage. Let's go through and use our pokey tool, open that up. And you can see We're not using a whole lot of paint. I'm using my big brush again. Water. It's about a 50-50. In any of the deeper, darker areas, I'm just going to go through and wash this in. Under the bits. Anywhere we've got recesses. I'm doing just the underbelly bits with this Carnage Red. Kind of lower half bits. And then the deepest areas up here. Oops, I got off screen. Deep Carnage Red wash. And I want this just in the lower bits. And here it's a little thick, so I'm just going to add some water and rebrush over all of it. It's going to move some of it so that our highlight and shadows still show through. Then we'll move it around. Just use it in other areas. Got a little bit on that blue, so I'm going to pull that up. Now the fresh blood, same exact thing. This is a brighter red. Pokey tool this bad boy. One bit. Now this one here I'm going to do two drops. Nice and thin, nice and watery. You can see how much brighter of a red this is. And we've already put that darker red down, so the rest of this is just going to get this brighter red. And same thing. This is going to go a long, long way. So I'm going to pull it. Into my other areas.
a little is going to go a long way. So you can see I've only used two brush loads. As, as that kind of empties out, I'm going to where it's heavy still. You can see some still in the uh, recess is pretty heavy. Pull that and use it in the areas you've got you've yet to do. Now that wash is going to go nice and deep as it dries and to give us a really cool green effect. So the shadows, because we started with the rosy, it's going to be a little bit darker. It's going to take more of the reds. And then the, uh, the rosy highlight is going to be a little bit brighter color. The deep red in the shadows um, or the violet red in the shadow areas draws more of a purple tone to it. And uh, the two different reds from the shadow areas to the highlight areas give us multi variations of that red tone. I've got a couple of heavy spots that I want to just spread out a little bit. There's an area here that just does not have very much red, so I'm going to move it in there. There we go. But yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Now, at that point, the grain is pretty much done. So I'm going to go back through. I'm going to let that dry. Because it's a wash, it's going to take a little bit longer. So I'm going to give that a bit to dry. And while that's, after that's drying, then we'll go back to our um, blues to touch up the tentacles. That way we've got uh, those all nice and, and uh, clear. And clean, I guess, is the better way to say it. So... We'll go back to the elf a little bit, back to our size zero, get a drink. All right, now I said we're going to do some eyes. So I do, I call them raccoon eyes. I need to lay out some black, some linen white. This is just pure black and linen white. I don't want to use pure white. Pure white just does not work for eyes. Got a size one brush. Pull some of the paint off. Pop in. I overpaint the eye with black. Overpaint it. Now we've got the eye sockets. I'm going to stop. I'm going to walk away from this painting because I want that, that black needs to dry. It needs to be 100% dry. I mean, you can't mess around with it because if you start pulling it up, especially if you start putting linen white on it, you're gonna gray it out. It just does not work. So you absolutely have to walk away. Let's talk a little bit about this one. This one I'm looking forward to doing. I was gonna drill it out and pin it. Um, but, the uh, I broke the tip on my drill, so I've got to get a new tip before I can finish it. But uh, this one here is also a Bones 5. It's going to go on a display piece with another 
um, that miniature that I have. I've got a cool scene planned for it. I was actually hoping to work on this one today, but because my drill bit broke, I wasn't able to, to use it. It's a bummer because I was really looking forward to having it pinned and start talking about the colors that I wanted to use on it. Um, but that's okay. Maybe I'll work a little bit on some of the cleanup while those are drying. Like I said, that black, I need to make sure that black is nice and dry. So I'll work on cleaning this up a little bit while I'm waiting. This is a competition piece. Um, and so making sure that the mold lines are all cleaned up. We've got good, smooth surfaces to paint. Super, super important because this one is a competition piece. If I want to have a chance to win, I need to make sure that everything is as good as I can get it. So I've already been working on this one a little bit. Like I said, I was getting ready to drill. I did the uh, boiling water technique so that everything was nice and straight as far as the swords because when I got it, the swords were both crooked. I'm just bent over. Good thing about bones, you get a pot of boiling water and just let the water boil. Don't do anything. Just get it up to a rolling boil. Pop a wooden spoon over it so it doesn't go over. But then you just pop your miniature in there for two to seven minutes, depending on the size and thickness. This one was in for, it was about two and a half minutes. And I pulled it out counted to five, popped it into a bowl of ice water, and the sword straightened right out. Swords in sheath, because they were a little <sighs> crooked as well. And just looking for any mold lines, get them cleaned up. With competition pieces, that's one thing that they look at. Did you leave any gaps? Did you clean up your mold lines? Did you get it to a good smooth surface prior to putting any paint on? So I had some challenges on the toe actually on this side here. I can see a little bit still here. This uh, bit of sandal has got a little bit Of course, the manufacturers now, well, the sculptors, I suppose, are really good about hiding those mold lines and like folds and everything, but sometimes you just get some mold lines that are a little stubborn and they bite you for those competitions. I have one little bit that's missed. And uh, this is going to be a part of a diorama, like I said, for a competition. Um, I'm hoping to uh, really blow the judges away. Because it'll have some scenic pieces as well as the miniatures. So it should be pretty good, I, I feel, anyhow. Mold line cleanup, one of those long, challenging ones where it's good to do. You just have to be in the right mindset for it. Get your lights set really nice, pop on some good music. Just get into a groove and allow yourself to look and feel and Be aware of every aspect of that miniature. 
And of course, give it a good wash before you begin painting. It works out really good. All right, those eyes should be dry at this point. The black, yep, looks good. So we're going back to our size one brush. The size can really vary, whatever you're most comfortable with. For me, the most important thing is a really good sharp tip. And leaving some of the black there as though it's eyeliner. challenging. Nope, I'm not happy with it. Not happy with it. That's gone. Let's go ahead and touch up with the midnight blue a little bit on those tentacles. Now we know we've got the brain done. Let's go through and just see. I know we've got some red bits on here that we want to cover up. I can go back to my big massive brush. And I am just looking at doing a secondary coat over the whole tentacle as well as any cleanup that I need to do. So this really sets our base tone down of this midnight blue. Edges are nice and clean. carefully around this bad boy. Just looking for good opacity, even coverage. I want to make sure that the black as well as the gray is covered up on these tentacles because the colors I'm going to use are going to build up from this blue.
so good even coverage is the key on any miniature paint job overall I think these brains came out pretty decent I mean it's still drying a little bit I'll have to uh, just make sure I got good coverage but uh, overall I think it's looking pretty good drying up really neat and decent So these tentacles are going to have like uh, spots and rings on them. Should be pretty cool. And the edges are going to be Next big focus, because I want these to kind of come over a little bit. While I'm working on this, I actually, because I have some of the uh, colors still on my palette, I can use some of them in uh, different aspects. Trying to use up all of this twilight blue. Get these edges nice and clean. Because they will wrap over, I'm able to. I know there will be some of it on this underside. There's almost a uh, like a lip. That will remain this twilight blue. So I'm just trying to use it all up best I can. That way I don't have any wasted paint. So I would say that's uh, probably one of the biggest expenses is the paint. Um, but it actually isn't too bad because so much of it just goes such a long way. I mean, each of these bottles I have has, I would guess, about 300 drops in it. You can see on even these bigger miniatures, it's not like I'm using half a bottle. So in my mind, it's not that bad. Watch for sales and triads are a great way to save some money on buying some paint yeah that's looking like good brains i think nope james sorry i missed um online D, &D is it as popular i can't find a local group here out in the uk so i would say um here in the u.s i can tell you that um you know that's actually a very loaded question so yes it is extremely popular um for adventure league uh, Adventure League has a ton of online games going all the time. Um, conventions I am seeing are continuing to offer more and more online games. Um, but personal online games are dwindling like a ton. If you go on and um, you're looking at like Roll20, the number of... Um, personal run games 
have been cut like crazy. Now there are still quite a few, but um, most of them are all pay to play. Um, very few that are offering free games. Um, and many of the games are um, people looking for long-term players. So they want a campaign that's going to go two years. So it's a, I would say it definitely has cut down a lot since the pandemic here in the U.S. anyhow has started to see, um, you know, some, some ease in the restrictions and everything. Uh, with that being said, though, there there's still a ton out there because a lot of people just out of convenience have m migrated to online and um, Adventure League has really opened up, uh, you know, uh, what they're allowing for content and everything. So, yes, it's still super strong, but not as strong as it was a year ago, for sure. All right, let me go after these eyes again. can see with me with eyes. I am a stickler on it, but I don't do like one brush stroke and call it good. I look for how can I use the tip of my brush, make multiple impacts to control the depth. So I don't know how well that's going to show. This darn camera just is not the best for this, but my other one is being repaired. Instagram, Instagram, Instagram will be the saving grace. One of those I still am not super, super happy with. Being a stickler has its pros and cons for sure. Here I was hoping by now we have this face done. I promise we'll get there. We don't have a whole lot to go, but I am a stickler. With the eyes, it's super important to do it at this stage for me, for, the, for my technique and the way that I process it, just because um, I'm a creature of habit. Um, yeah, James, for me, I'm lucky. So I prefer actually having in-person games. So I run um, multiple campaigns. I do a youth campaign. Um, I was for a long time doing a female-only campaign, um, but it was kind of funky because I'm a guy. So I was like, no, I, I, so I stopped doing that. Um, and then I run just two open campaigns. There are open homebrew uh, campaigns in my game world. Um, and then I do a lot of different games for different conventions and stuff. Um, and so the last one I did was oh, maybe, maybe January, I want to say. It was Houston Gamers Con. And I ran one shots for that. Um, but I've been pretty lucky. I've been pretty blessed in that I've had, um, I've really been able to attract uh, really good committed players. So very little turnover. <clears throat> and everybody has seemed to really enjoy them. Yes. Mm. 
what a challenge eyes can be. But that got it. So all it is is basically, think of a raccoon, it's black, a little bit less of the off-white, and then the pupil is just a, just a line. Maybe a triangle is a better way to describe it. Whew. Eyes. Done. Eyes are definitely a challenge, though, so. But, eyes done. Now we can continue to move on. So going back to our base coat, which was our fair shadow. We're just going to go through and I've thinned this out a touch. Retouch the areas. That we can blend into that shadow color. So just starting to build up between those shadows and this base coat. Looking at higher areas, cheekbones, chin, nose, forehead, and then on the hand, higher areas. So this is where we'll start to again, push those shadows, those tones that we put on there, push those deeper in. See the finger separations on this process a little bit. This is going to push the shadows deep. So I'm still trying to decide what these, who had these miniatures specifically. So these are the ones I'm doing on my Wednesday show where uh, we build a character, I still have not decided what I'm going to do with them. So I thought about doing giveaways. Oh, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, so I can tell you some tips on um, what I've done is I've... Um, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what you've got in your local area, uh, but I went on to um, into our uh, local gaming stores and I hung a sign there. Uh, the same sign I put on my uh, on groups on Facebook. We have uh, groups here um, that you can uh, post in, and I posted the same uh, looking for group. Um, and it was just a local gaming group 
Um, I also did the same thing on a gaming group for, uh, they focus on like board games and stuff. Put if, uh, you know, anybody's interested in trying Dungeons and Dragons, I'm a GM. This is who I am. Here's where you can find more content. Um, I built a uh, Discord for it. And um, then I would just do regular postings. And I planned mine out quite a way. So I started posting mine um, when I first moved here in, it would have been um, beginning of May of uh, 2020. Um, by December, I had two groups um, built and ready to go. And so it wasn't a slow, or I mean a fast process uh, by any means, but I made sure to vet everybody out as well. Um, and up front, I gave a lot of information. Here's what you can expect from my games. Here's when the sessions are going to be. And I flat out put down the rules. We are going to meet weekly, um, Thursdays at this time. We're going to meet weekly, Tuesdays at this time. We're going to meet weekly, Saturdays at this time. So I had it very structured. Those who couldn't make it, I didn't even bother with. So it was kind of frustrating at first because it did take a long time. And uh, one of the groups, especially, I had a lot of turnover in initially. But that didn't last very long. Once word got out, it went quick and uh, people participated really, really well. Still to this day, I ask, or I have people asking if I've got any openings, if I'm going to run any more games, anything like that. So uh, it definitely has paid off. All right, I'm just moving up into brighter and brighter highlights, up to my fair highlight. Hit the knuckles a little bit. But yeah, with the uh, like game stores opening back up and everything, um, uh, we've seen a big surge in uh, games being played in game stores and everything too. So um, again, I don't know what your situation is like as far as game stores or anything, but uh, I always try to partner with them. I bring them in a uh, miniature a year. As a donation, I tell them they can raffle it or whatever, and uh, try to keep them on my. I try to bribe them quite a bit, but we also have a couple of places that are like pubs, um, where they've got uh, food and drink, and uh, I've had a couple of them reach out to me and ask if I would do like a weekly D and D night, just like open one shots for patrons that they could advertise. So that might be something, again, I don't know what, what uh, uh, rules and regulations or anything like that is for you, but that might be something too, is check out a local pub and just say, hey, would you be interested in allowing me to host on, uh, you know, Tuesday nights seem to be when they really want it, Tuesdays or Wednesdays, uh, here in the States anyhow, um, just so they can draw in people and then they offer some type of a special with like appetizers and stuff. So I would say check that out too.
All right, skin tones on the elf all done. And my uh, Claritin has run out, so I need to uh, go take some more, but we've also got the brain done um, and the tentacles started. So a pretty good process, I think. I think we've done pretty well for our uh, bringing it to life. I think we're starting to see that. We didn't touch the troll at all, which I'm a little bummed about, but I think uh, I think we've got lots of opportunity uh, to jump on that next week. Um, for today, I've got to go get my medicine. Um, James, thank you for uh, joining me live here today. I know it's a challenge with you being over the pond, but I do appreciate it. Hope you have a fantastic weekend, and anybody else who watches this uh, VOD, make sure you check our schedule out, see when we're streaming, uh, see if there's content that you'd like to do, and uh, have a fantastic remainder of your weekend. Bye-bye.